Well, hello, that's me again. Today is March 9th and it is Thursday, I believe. So, and before I proceed with my setup of sorts, I want to address um, the issue which pops up here and there. Most of the time it pops up through trolls, but there are also some decent people who watch my broadcast or podcasts, if you wish to learn things. And uh, I want to address uh, what they ra uh, raise, basically, this issue. It is the fact that many say that, oh, you know what, um, you should stop, uh, you know, basically putting down all those uh, policy makers, decision makers, and other think tank them of the United States and combined West and concentrate on a pretty much delivery of the material. Well, I need to explain to you that this it's pe pedagogy 101. I use those things not just to put down uh, those people and those organizations which can continue to produce BS in copious amounts, but it is uh, used as a vehicle because it's a vehicle to deliver the uh, basically a valuable uh, information and knowledge which I'm trying to deliver because as I already stated many times uh, before, and I will repeat it again, my task is not to just gain some political points here or just uh, gather some donations and be done with this. For that, there are plenty, actually, majority of those pseudo-military, pseudo-analytical resources on the Internet with those fanboys who wouldn't know shit from Shinola in any serious military organization. My task is to really educate. And uh, it is uh, stated uh, throughout all my writing, and I have a record, obviously, to back it up. And that is why I'm using those things as a counterpoint so of sorts to show you what kind of garbage and trash is uh, thrown at unsuspecting, a very much ignorant uh, general public uh, in the combined West, and then what is happening in reality. And I use very often, uh, well, very often, not not exclusively, uh, Western uh, sources as much as I can. Of course, there are things which, well, uh, sometimes I have to bypass Western sources and just go directly for uh, Russian sources and or original sources. So this is what I wanted to tell you. And the reason I wanted to tell you this is because I am on the record and not only me, including people who were professionally involved on a good level in, for example, uh, American intelligence sources and intelligence organization, that American intelligence sucks, actually. And it's not good. Uh, General Lubimov, Alexander Lubimov, the father of famous Russian journalist, also Alexander Lubimov, uh, but he was a famous SVR guy, uh, and you can find him uh, in kind of many places on the Russian internet. He already spoke about this uh, probably 10, 15 years ago when he was talking about it, I believe it was glad, but again, anybody who wants to find it, they will find it. I, I simply don't have time anymore to uh, uh, go for this minutia, so to speak, you know, he said, she said. But he stated that, uh, yeah, uh, the quality of the American intelligence, and especially American strategic uh, intelligence and analysis is extremely low. And we know this, look at uh, Afghanistan, look at Iraq, look at, uh, you know, whatever you want around the world. You can see yourself what it is. And so here it is. This is what we need to start with. Uh, yesterday there, uh, there was an annual um, uh, threat assessment published by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. And uh, as you can see yourself, it was published, uh, well, actually published on February 6th. It was released to public yesterday, I believe, maybe a few days uh, uh, earlier, but it really doesn't matter. So it is there, you know, those big conches from uh, intelligence uh, agencies. And guess what? I want to immediately forestall any kind of... Um, uh, speculation of this matter, the chief of this uh, thing of uh, national intelligence is the lady with the uh, second name Heinz, or Haynes, I believe. She has a bachelor in physics, bachelor of science and physics, and then she went and got her Juris Doctor. She became a lawyer. So, as you might expect, <laughs> so, and she was a very funny, she's a very funny uh, woman. She fixes cars and she had the bookstore with her husband which was noted for uh, holding the erotic readings. So uh, 
as you can see yourself here, she's very qualified. But hey, uh, when you begin to look at those people, you begin to really uh, understand the what degree of the professional incompetence, everything degraded in the United States. And uh, considering the fact that it never was good to start with. And I can go about it for a long time. You can also read about those things in my books. Uh, for example, you need to read uh, some references there about, of the uh, Congresswoman Barbara Holtzman and her commission, which actually showed how the uh, Galen's organization, which is former uh, German uh, Nazi uh, intelligence machine, was basically manipulating the, all those people from the Office of Strategic uh, Services and then later CIA and how they almost started the World War III. And it continues today. They really don't know what they're doing. But look at this. We will start with the assessment in the sense that um, uh, uh, this is what uh, stated in CNN. This is CNN summary. And look at this. Um, she talks about uh, all kinds of things about Russia, which she obviously doesn't understand anything, because when you look again at those people who delivered that, uh, and uh, except for the General Nakasone, who himself uh, is the guy who went through ROTC and became the, some kind of intelligence uh, officer, military intelligence officer, but um, Haynes states in uh, uh, Unclassified Annual Threat Assessment Report that uh, uh, cautioned that the potential spree confessive by, by Ukraine may be limited to the extent to which Ukrainian forces are having to draw down their resources and equipment as well as suffer further casualties defending against uh, current Russian operations. So yeah, it's kind of convoluted way to say that uh, is speaking frankly, uh, Ukraine doesn't have really uh, that much uh, uh, in terms of the resources and in terms of the resources to conduct any kind of operation. And uh, you know what, uh, this uh, counteroffensive, anybody who says that, oh yeah, it could be, should be to Melitopol. Yeah, Russians are so dumb, they sit there and waiting for this until it kind of, you know, starts and then they will suddenly start grabbing their asses trying to perform some kind of the defensive uh, maneuvers and uh, operations. It's complete baloney. Everybody expects this, and obviously, more than ISR, intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance allowed you allows you to know a lot of things of what is going on there. And as a result, we uh, and especially against the continuous uh, circus clown show from the New York Times and all kinds of other uh, American and German like Zeit. Um, resources who continue to press on with the idea that some pro-Ukrainian group blew up Nord Stream. I don't know. I mean, they are that stupid. No, I, I mean it. Good uh, intelligence people and good uh, operations people, they will come up with a believable story. But these imbeciles, they just continue to, buy, you know, sell this crap. And so against this background, they need needed to come up with something which should explain why NATO is completely, uh, basically, uh, left without the uh, any kind of access or a surplus in terms of weaponry and in terms of ammunition so they come up with this assessment and um look what they are uh, right there and this is mrs uh, Haynes, and then of course uh, mr rye of the fbi ray of fbi look what they write uh they this uh once obviously them uh large portion of this assessment is built around China, China, China. But then, of course, next thing comes Russia, Russia, Russia. And guess what? Here is their conclusion. Moscow's military forces have suffered losses during the Ukraine conflict that will require years of rebuilding and leave them less capable of posing a conventional military threat to European security and operating as assertively in Eurasia and on the global stage. Well, I have a bridge to sell to this lady and those people who were com uh, conducting this and I uh, and not only that but I can conclude they do not understand warfare at all which is absolutely expected from lawyers 
And then she uh, writes that Moscow will become even more reliant on nuclear, cyber, and space capabilities as it deals with the extensive damage to Russia's ground forces. Well, evidently, we have a very different uh, understanding of the damage because Russia didn't even introduce her reserves into the operations. But hey, what do I know? This lady evidently gained her experience through the erotic readings and how else she ended up uh, in being the chief of the national intelligence. It's, one can only guess. She is a classic Obama creature, so, um, uh, so you would expect it from her and other people who have absolutely no clue what modern war is. And there it is. Heavy losses to its ground forces and the large-scale expenditures of precision-guided munitions during the conflict have degraded Moscow ground and air-based conventional capabilities and increased its reliance on nuclear weapons. The moment this was published few days ago, Russia uh, yesterday and today unleashes a uh, barrage across the whole territory of the of Ukraine or the former Ukraine using those very high precision stand of weaponry ranging from any kind of the drones to kinjals which are hypersonic and which Russia produces now like uh, I don't know a lot many and of course those calibers and all kinds of other those weapons from which uh, of which Russia runs um, uh, ran out of uh, what uh, starting from the May last year or May or April last year and these are the people who conduct you know the those intelligence assessments for the United States no wonder then the United States cannot win shit anywhere basically and then what do you expect these are Obama people don't forget Biden's administration is essentially Obama administration and you have those swamp creatures who have no clue and they do everything for the PR and uh, you can go, uh, and what is remarkable about this, they still continue to contradict themselves even within this assessment. And look at this. Uh, there here are, uh, or he, whatever they are, because she was the one who was presenting it, but of course it was collective effort to uh, create a lot of bullshit. That's what they write there. After Russian military losses during Ukraine's counteroffensive in late summer 2022, uh, I didn't remember any big losses there, but hey, what do I know? Putin publicly warned the West that he was ready to use nuclear weapons to defend Russia. Yes, for those people in the U.S. intelligence community, it is written in Russia's military doctrine. And Putin warned that if anybody wants to invade Russia, he will use the weapon per nuclear doctrine of Russian military doctrine issued 2014 December. The full text of this doctrine is available but these idiots there in Washington DC they continue to uh, promote all kinds of the well-known things as some kind of sensation now and here it is while Moscow is evidently in accordance to those people uh, run out of high precision weapons which was demonstrated how Russia ran out of them yesterday today by blowing the shit out of Ukraine but here it is Moscow continues to develop long-range nuclear capable missile and underwater delivery systems meant to penetrate or bypass US missile defenses Russia is expanding and modernizing its large diverse and modern set of non-strategic systems wait a minute one immediately has to ask the question but you just stated in the previous page that Russia is absolutely you know just drained you know and bloodletting happened such way that Russia has very little and sustained some kind of catastrophic losses or whatever the losses but look at this in the same time Russia continues to develop and uh, procure those systems non-strategic systems capable of delivering a nuclear conventional warheads because Moscow believes such system offer options to deter adversaries control the escalation of potential hostilities and counter US and the light conventional forces yes yes this is precisely what Moscow believes and that is precisely what they believe in Washington now because they understand United States Army is not a contender on the combined armed warfare against Russian forces they can huff and puff and they do can do whatever they want but again as I already stated uh, basically United States lost the arms race especially nuclear arms race 
and I, as I already on the record many times, you wouldn't believe the scale of this loss once it's disclosed completely, which I don't expect it to be done anytime soon, at least in the Biden's administration, because essentially the United States will not be able to catch up, which also brings us back to the hypersonic weapons and i'm talking about real hypersonic weapons not this dark eagle thing which is nothing more than ballistic missile and most ballistic missiles they theoretically reach hypersonic speeds but the, uh, just uh, uh, some kind of the gliding block there it doesn't mean the hypersonics in the sense that you have the real hypersonic engine united states doesn't have it, this engine and it will not have it uh, anytime soon and so we continue to listen to these confused and obfuscating reports about all this and then bang each time something happens and you have to say um, yeah it's about the same uh, level of veracity of those assessments and reports as for example the version of the pro-ukrainian group blowing up Nord Stream 2 so but hey what do i know they are professionals right they know things which of course they don't but it, it same goes on and on in terms of the explaining what is um, at stake today. And look at this. Their uh, delusion and desperation of those people is such that here it is. We have another congressman uh, that, for example, uh, on March 9th, which is today, demanded U.S. Congressman Lamborn call for the closure of Rosatom. Look what this guy says. The U.S. congressman noted the expansion of China's nuclear potential. According to Lamborn, this will be facilitated by a Russian state company. Yes, Rosatom is the monster. It's the largest high-tech uh, uh, atomic energy and not only atomic energy company in the world. And here it is. This is what he uh, provides and suggests. Hopefully we will see a comprehensive administrative strategy to destroy this relationship and ideally shut down Ross Adam, the congressman added. When you talk about people having absolute uh, uh, grandeurs of illusion or folie de grandeur and people being absolutely stupid, what do you expect? He's a lawyer. And he thinks that he can shut down corporation, which actually occupies half market of the nuclear uh, power generation and produces anything from combat lasers to uh, composite materials and many other things which are absolutely incredible and high tech. But here, here we are, we have those people. And they believe this crap. That's the problem. Although, I mean, there are some people left in Washington, D.C., which kind of know the score. And uh, the score, as I already stated, United States lost the arms race. And now, as I already stated, as Mr. Cavoli, I, don't look at me. Mr. Cavoli, a three-star general, so sir, the Supreme Allied Commander Europe, on the record in January, they are astounded by the scale and ferocity of the war which is of special military operation mind you if russia begins to fight a war that will be a whole other story altogether and he he is on the record that they just have nothing i mean against that but hey we continue to get those people who come out and you know again and uh, mrs or whatever haynes uh, she obviously thought she still is in this bookstore uh, con uh, you know conducting those erotic readings while compiling this assessment which is of course a complete baloney just to demonstrate to you how unaware those people are i'm sure there are some people who are aware but i don't think so they really have them really voice uh, there but let me show you degree of a complete detachment from the real life there in especially American intelligence community so so to speak or lack of intelligence uh, here it is this is Daily Mail uh, this is Daily Mail yesterday and look at this some of the British journalists goes uh, to to Russia, not some Moscow, St. Petersburg, Sochi, all those portion, you know, 
incredible cities. No, no, no. She goes to uh, uh, city of Perm, which is the foothills of the Ural Mountains, and she begins to ask the question, are sanctions really wrecking life in Russia? As British supermarket ration eggs and vegetables, thanks in part to Putin's war in Ukraine, shops in a provincial Russian city are groaning under the piles of fresh food, writes Suri. Well, Perm is not exactly provincial. It's a huge, actually, uh, uh, industrial center, and it is uh, also the motherland, so to speak, of Russian Perm Motors, famous uh, Perm Engine Making Corporation. It's a city of around a million, so you cannot call it provincial by any means, but then again, these are British uh, and American journalists, what do you expect from them? They are badly educated. Uh, have no class, but even this lady, British journalist, she had to go and provide this type of the photos. Uh, uh, above is the photo of the supermarket in the in Bristol, as you can see, it's so pretty much empty. And there's those poor bastards, Russians, you know. And you can go to the mail site and look all the photos from a Russian supermarket in this definitely not Moscow area, city of Perm. And this is pretty much picture which continues to um, demonstrate itself or present itself all over Russia because they still cannot wrap their brains around that Russia not only one major of the suppliers of shitload of technologies, not just resources, but also grain and food in the world. Russia is if there is only uh, the country which co can be called autarky, it is the only country the world, in the world, and it's Russia. Autarky, of course, being fully autonomous, being able to provide for the most of its needs internally, economically. And uh, now they kind of face the music, and yeah, you go to Perm, you go to Ekaterinburg, Novosibirsk, Vladivostok, Krasnoyarsk, it's all the same, all the same. The stores are the same. Even provincial stores in some village, they're really good, you know. So, and you look at this and say, oh, how do you explain to those people? Even when they show those things, why did it take so long for them to wrap their brains around it? But judging by the assessment of the, uh, uh, you know, the intelligence community, uh, I mean, they do not have really necessary skills and IQ to really come up with the proper, uh, uh, basic information and assessment. And this is just one of the show shows, so to speak, of uh, how really backward and stupid they are. And when you look at the CTRAP of Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation from yesterday, as I already stated, uh, people in Pentagon who understand and who are involved in the operation planning, they understand what those numbers mean. And again, it was uh, yesterday, today, obviously, the numbers will be higher. But look at this. I already uh, underlined it in red for you. Even yesterday, how, what are the losses killed? I mean, killed of uh, Ukrainian armed forces. Um, and you can see yourself at Kopiansk, up to 60 people, uh, Red Liman, uh, up to 130. Then you have the uh, you, uh, South Donetsk, uh, 65. Donetsk uh, direction is more than 180, and Kherson more than one, more than uh, 50, and so you begin to add those. So you have what 310 plus um, 125, so 435 plus 50, so yeah, 500. One battalion wiped out, and it goes on and on every day, and uh, that is why Cavoli, Mr. Cavoli, who is actual general, who is the guy who actually commands things, and who is responsible for the planning, he, he says that we are absolutely astonished by the scale of all that and the violence, and we are not ready for that. But hey, again, what does he or me or other military, former military professionals know when we have people who are obviously doing their erotic reading in the in Congress and present this uh, basically it's not even the serious document it's some kind of um, again PR BS because that's the only thing they can do and they they really do not have appropriate skills and appropriate competences to conduct any more serious analysis which was always not that good and uh, also to show you uh, to show you how much it all matters uh, in this respect. Uh, you can see yourself that um, uh, obviously 
uh, as Wall Street, uh, New York Times, pardon me, reports uh, Pentagon block sharing evidence of possible Russian war crimes with Hague Court. President Biden has not acted to resolve a dispute that pits the Defense Department against other agencies. Why do they do this? Very simple. Russians they do not conduct war crimes in there are obviously you absolutely it's a war zone you kill accidentally people it's it's a tragedy but there's no war crimes there's no deliberate things but the reason uh, why pentagon blocks it because if it unblocks it it sets the precedent and then guess what war crimes by american service people in iraq afghanistan and other places in libya they will pop up immediately and guess what russians have very good lawyers who would be happy to present the world with the evidence of all that including in syria and so when you look at this that's well it's only natural they know they you know they committed a crime so they don't want it to be exposed on the uh, uh you know uh, in the legalistic sense so that is why they block this and uh, russians don't mind but hey what do i know again and now about the counterpoint so i want to go back again uh to uh, J uh, Jamestown Foundation that this bullshit which is uh, was uh, uh, reported by Mr. Losing about uh, the Russian Navy and about supposedly questionable naval modernization during wartime. It was again the same as this uh, intelligence assessment full of shit crap basically taken out from the uh, open media and juxtaposition such a way as to show that Russians are somehow um, dragging on the uh, modernization of the navy of russian navy which continues actually tremendous uh, with a tremendous uh, speed but uh, while i spoke about mr Luzin's biography yesterday this is another guy from the uh, jamestown and he also tries to uh, write about on those uh, you know military topics remarkably you will not find any background of this PhD and whatever bullshit he defended his PhD thesis. Uh, he is Maxim Starchak. He um, basically, uh, as I already stated, he would know shit from Shinola in any military organization. But he writes about those disarmament and things of this nature. And he checks all boxes for the, all those uh, uh, Navalny and uber liberal pro Western, which is primarily uh, foreign intelligence assets. And look at this. If you look at his background, he also is all those uh, people who have no clue what they're uh, talking about. And um, so, what can I say? This is the level of the. Um, competencies, or rather, lack thereof, which American. Uh, uh, intelligence organizations and NGOs prefer because it is all about PR it never was about serious assessment and as I already stated uh, uh, it's it's a long story it's the same as which Mr. with Mr. Bismanov or Rebecca Koffler you have basically a bunch of shysters selling bullshit to people who are obsessed and so insecure which is primarily what is happening right now in American military and intelligence apparatus that they want to hear about you know how good they are which they are not and uh to kind of counterpoint or uh to show you about what is russian uh modernization naval modernization is since we already spoke a little bit about this mr uh, uh, losing uh, uh issue here it is i compiled a little bit of the list of the nuclear powered submarines of russian federation and these are by far not the ones which are being uh, uh under construction there are more of them for example of the yasin class but even when you look at this and these are nukes which are fast attack submarines you can see yourself how many of them are being built if you look at, for example, project 885 and 885M, these are zircon carriers. And you can see yourself that four of them acting, another already active, another already, already under sea trials, another under construction. Three more are under construction. So I didn't put them here. 
and you can see there's a bunch of them are uh, active nukes uh, others are refit and they are refitted to carry all kinds of uh, funny weapon systems again be them zircons or be them what have you even look at this uh, there are this wonderful uh, project uh, uh, Victor 3 which is uh, six, project 671 RTMK K standing for the Kralate guided or cruise missile and they are even post refit trials now they have been refitted and when you begin to pack this together and then you uh, go to the uh, SSKs which I already showed you which are of course diesel submarines which are all new this as these are all new I'm not talking about about the 25 all the old ones which are still active and you begin to go over this and then you add now br uh, the 10 eight of them brand new uh, strategic missile submarines and then when you begin to look also at the uh, manufacturing or building of the uh, um, brand new uh, frigates, some of them are Super Garshkov as they call it already and uh, you can see yourself also how many of them under construction, how many of them ordered and then you calculate this, then you will suddenly recognize this is astounding actually the number of the hulls which Russia is producing since uh, building since 2014 and they are improving and all, all of them not to mention those surface components such as like uh, uh, Marshal Shapashnikov good old um, Udaloy class project 1155s which are now carriers of zircons and all those long range stems or standoff weapons high precision weapons of which Russia evidently ran out you know have to keep this in mind and you begin to understand that modernization is not only proceeding a pace it's accelerating tremendously and why it is accelerating tremendously is a whole other story but you don't expect it to hear from CIA or this national intelligence thing because as anything what is happening within the beltway today it is all about PR because America today is as it saddens me to say this is screwed up so badly economically militarily and in any other category that the only thing they left is to what do this uh, you know what wizard of force thing you know just half and puff and create all those pictures which are completely virtual which do not reflect reality and reality is not conducive for any American success and that is why we have what we have today and this is what I wanted to tell you today and uh, kind of explain why I use those things not just to degrade them I like demolishing them make no mistake I like to debunk them I would love to talk to all those people who write them I don't think so they have guts to speak to me in person to person manner and especially make it public but hey what do I know so in this case this was my message for you today guys and as always those who uh, like what I do please subscribe to my channel and support me on patreon and buy me a coffee or two guys and I'll be talking to you later have the nice rest of the week guys bye bye